When it comes to delivering customer support, there are some things you don't want teams to hear. Intercom's streamlined support platform clears up space for more organized workflows and peace of mind. Our business messenger uses chatbots, shared inboxes, apps, and more. Who doesn't like the sound of that? Intercom. Less of this. And more of this. To learn more, go to intercom.com slash support. Fall is a season of gathering that brings us together with warmth and color. So whether it's a birthday, anniversary, or a special event, celebrate your friends and family with a gorgeous bouquet from 1-800-Flowers.com. 1-800-Flowers makes it easy to find your reason and brighten someone's day with exclusive offers and great values on bouquets and arrangements. To order today, visit 1-800-Flowers.com slash tune in. That's 1-800-Flowers.com slash tune in. Hey, if you'd like to hear this show without ads and plugs interrupting, there's one thing you can do right now to make that happen, and that is become a PW Torch VIP member. You got about a dozen other podcasts throughout the week that I host that are VIP exclusive, and you get the Wade Keller post shows and podcasts during the week with the ads and plugs removed, all on a separate feed exclusively for VIP members. Plus, tons of other podcasts that are VIP exclusive, access to our full archives of podcasts dating back to 2004, which includes post pay per view roundtables dating back to late 2004. Also access to our full archives, thousands of podcasts, over 1,500 back issues of the Pro Wrestling Torch Weekly Newsletter that started it all, Add free access to our website and more. Check out full details at pwtorchvipinfo.com. That's pwtorchvipinfo.com to get full details and then jump to our sign-up form. It's mobile-friendly, desktop-friendly. In two minutes, you can be a VIP member, show support for us, and we'll give you a lot in return, including a streamlined listening experience on your iPhone or Android device with the ads and plugs removed. Go check it out, pwtorchvipinfo.com. Want to hear something amazing? Discover matches all the cash back you earn on your credit card at the end of your first year, automatically, dollar for dollar with no limit on how much you can earn. Extra cash? Come on, how amazing is that? In fact, it's even more amazing when you realize all the places where Discover is accepted. 99% of places in the U.S. that take credit cards. So when it comes to Discover, get used to hearing yes more often. Learn more at discover.com slash yes. 2021 Nielsen Report. Limitations apply. Hi, my name is Joe, and I'm a home decor overspender. Hi, Joe! I made a breakthrough. I found HomeSense. It's unreal. So many brand name sofas. I bought one. Oh, wow, really? It's okay. Yeah. The price is so low. Lighting, unexpected. Rugs, handcrafted. Wall art, eclectic. I go back like every week. <gasps> no, it's always different. New unique decor, same great savings. Every time you go. Field trip! HomeSense. Standout pieces, outstanding prices. Hi, it's Jonathan Cotton with the Good Feet Store, and you know what time of year it is. It's back-to-school time, and time once again for all of those after-school activities. Whether it's ballet or football, drama or field hockey, band or basketball, kids' feet need to feel good. Those cleats, sneakers, or shoes for band often don't do those young feet any favors. If our kids are going to stay active and healthy, then they need good feet. That means it's also time to take your kids to the Good Feet Store. Yeah, that's right, the young ones, the kids. Bring them into the Good Feet Store and let's treat them to some personal service. Our team members will measure their feet and find the right art support for them. They can still wear the shoes they want, but they will have the support to make them comfortable now and keep their feet healthy for the future. It won't take long and it could change their life. Go to goodfeet.com to make an appointment or just stop by the location nearest you, the Good Feet Store. Now, PW Torch and Spreaker bring you the Wade Keller Pro Wrestling Post Show. It's time to talk this week's AEW Dynamite on TNT. Well, we couldn't have a better co-host today because Eric... Hangman Page is back. How you feeling? <laughs> is all well in well, the world? <laughs> I'm finally getting, presumably, the match I wanted at uh, All Out and did not get in Chicago. And huge pop. He's still over. A loud He's Cowboy more over than Moxley. 
Yes. Yeah. In loud, uh, loud chants, Moxley booed yes. the attack page. <laughs> yes. How dare. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so we've got, you know, they, the, they booked it the right way. Hangman immediately inserted back into the title picture. The question I have is, when the hell are they going to do this match? Are they going to do this on Dynamite? Are they going to do it on Rampage? Is this the full gear from the Target Center in beautiful downtown Minneapolis? Is this the main event of that show? Um, They sure seem like they were headed toward an Omega uh, Danielson rematch. And and I don't think we're getting a three-way match. So what the heck happens next? I think we're going to get it at full gear. I don't know how they're going to tell that story and maybe momentarily on uh, uh, roads to the top, there will be an interview with hangman where he, he challenges them to, uh, to the match at full gear. But yeah, I mean that, that is left open. I, I think based on the crowd reaction tonight and really even before tonight, the right move, um, what would be tap hangman page headline? I think that will do better pay-per-view buys than uh, Daniel Bryan and Kenny Omega, to be honest. Because we've already seen that match, or 30 minutes of it anyway. and uh... I, I think Brian Danielson lost earlier this year on WWE TV trying to go after a world title. I don't, I mean, I think people are super excited to see Kenny Omega and Brian Danielson, and I think they love Brian Danielson, but he's a WWE guy for years who most recently came up short against Roman Reigns. Hangman Page is the AEW guy. I just think it's the right move to make. I think it's great AEW signed some great talent. But I, I, if I'm Brian Danielson, I, if I'm AEW, I, wor- I worry about him. There being a little bit of a backlash if he leapfrogs Hangman Page for no good reason. It was one thing for Christian to do it when Hangman wa- took paternity leave. But to me, the right business move for a variety of reasons is Hangman. You know, Brian, Brian can have great matches and challenge for a title later. This is, this is Hangman's time. But again, they might have a really good storyline in mind that, that delays it or detours it. And, and I'm, I'll be along for that ride if they tell it well. We've got five more dynamites and six more rampages until full gear. Yep. So I I feel like having a two week build and in in week three you have the a page Omega title match and then you've got to build something else up for full gear. I feel like that's not enough time. It doesn't do justice to either. So I I guess I'm all for uh, Hangman Page defeating Kenny Omega to win the belt at full gear uh on november 12th 13th something like that something like that i'll be there you'll be there it'll be fun yep yeah yeah i I thought it was notable um when when moxley hit hangman with the chair from behind i mean it wasn't like an eruption of booze but nobody cheered that i heard and it was booze um and uh that was interesting i mean I, you know, uh, granted, when someone's gone for a while and they come back, they have an advantage over someone who's been hanging around doing their thing. Uh, but, you know, it's Philadelphia and there's no guarantee. And it's different in 2021 than it was in 2001. But there's no guarantee Philadelphia is going to like, uh, you know, Hangman Page more than they're going to like hardcore Mo- John Moxley. And, you know, in this circumstance, they did. I, I, if I'm uh, again, that's even more reason. And, and Shivani was really pushing on commentary, you know, that, that hangman page is, or that, I'm sorry, that Moxie deserves it after what happened with Don Callis and, and Kenny. I thought it was a great like swerve to have Tony really kind of pushing that idea. They had Moxley cut a promo earlier in the show that sort of planted the idea in your mind that maybe Moxley is revving up to get a title shot again. And it was a good, you know, cause if, if hangman came out and they hadn't done that, you'd just be thinking, well, of course, hangman's going to win. Um, and they kind of made it seem like we're building up Moxley, and it almost turned into feeling like a bit of a swerve by the time the rug wasn't pulled out from under Hangman, and he's standing on the ladder looking around going, nobody's here, I think I can grab this chip. And then, of course, as everybody on top of a ladder goes through, he had to figure out how to get it unhooked, and there's that moment of panic that it won't work, but he got it. Yeah, I think uh, Mox took this great bump after a striking battle off the top of the ladder. Oh, he God. just sort of fell, and I, it, you know... Geez, guys, you're both uh, uh, have newborns at home. Uh, take care of yourselves. <laughs> and, yes. uh, two, two, two tables were broken, and uh, uh, Andrade took a big uh, back Oof. bump to the outside off a ladder that looked painful. Yeah, it was uh, it was carnage there in that main event. It was a battle of dad bods up there on top of the ladder at the end. Yeah. 
All right, let's uh, let's set the table here. Let's introduce ourselves and uh, talk more about other things on the show. This is the Wade Keller Pro Wrestling Post Show for October 6, 2021. I'm Wade Keller, the editor, publisher, founder of the Pro Wrestling Torch Weekly Newsletter and the website PeakWTorch.com and also the host of many podcasts throughout the week in many formats with many guest co-hosts and some solo, such as the VIP exclusive Wade Keller hotline that has been dropped every single day for over 10 years, maybe over 11 now. And uh, I lost track. Uh, I remember when it was like one month and people were like, congratulations. And then I got to five years and people were like, whatever. Um, and then I got to 10 years and no one noticed. I barely noticed. Um, but anyway, go VIP. Here at the Daily Wade Keller hotline along with uh, The Fix with Todd Martin that I co-host. Everything with Rich Fan and post pay-per-view roundtables. But for everyone, for free, you can hear the Wade Keller Pro Wrestling post shows like this and the Wade Keller Pro Wrestling podcasts. Yesterday, Jason Powell from ProWrestling.net, my longest-running regular co-host on the flagship, joined me. We talked for like four hours. We had a couple breaks um, to let the dogs out, basically, both of us, um, uh, literally. And and so, But otherwise, it turned into like a two-parter. We just got carried away. We really did an in-depth analysis of the WWE draft and the lay of the land after that. We got into AEW and, and the ratings for Rampage and the impact of the new signings and uh, the, the lack of growth of impact despite some AW talent um, being on the show and a lot more. And then later tonight for everyone, although VIP members got this last night early and our Patreon supporters got this early last night, part two featured the mailbag segment and Eric, an in-depth review of Roads to the Top. Jason and I talked about the, the debut episode just as Todd Martin and I did uh, last week on The Fix. Um, it, it's been a fun topic of conversation. I know we're pulling some people away from it, but as I told Eric earlier today, that's what DVRs were invented for. So you can listen to our live stream and then watch Roads to the Top later. Um, I keep referencing Eric. He is the co-host. He's the other voice you hear. He is a former Pro Wrestling Torch newsletter columnist from 30 years ago, 30 plus years ago, which is crazy. And uh, he will be coming into town for full gear. And he is uh, as excited as I am uh, about Roads to the Top. Uh, Eric, how you doing? I'm doing well, Wade. Yeah, I. Uh, this is a huge sacrifice on both of our parts. I know. We are not watching Roads to the Top live and, and cattily making comments uh, on social media <laughs> about it as we go. Uh, but but uh, worth it due to the dynamite tonight that was really hot in the opening and still had the crowd was pretty hot during the weird punk promo. And then it got flat for a while. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, crowd got brought back from, from the, uh, the Jericho angle, the women's match that was pretty good, and the uh, main event letter match. By the way, um, we will be uh, doing live post shows the next two Saturdays. I think the next two Saturdays, uh, Dynamite airs instead of on Wednesdays. So there'll be a scheduling change. But we'll still have some AEW content here on the Wade Keller Pro Wrestling Post Show feed on Wednesday nights. So uh, check for that. Um, yeah, uh, this was a, uh, a good show. Um, a good episode of Dynamite with a red-hot crowd. Um, we have a lot to talk about. Well, let's give out the, uh, the phone numbers and the email and, uh, and then uh, move on with the show. The, the uh, phone number, if you want to give us a call, is 347-215-8558. That's 347-215. 215-8558. When you call, push one on your keypad, and that'll let you know, uh, that'll let, let us know that you want to be on the show. You can uh, also email us, Wade Keller Podcast at PWTorch.com. That's Wade Keller Podcast at PWTorch.com. I have to turn roads to the top off. I have it on in the background. I'm getting distracted, Eric. I'm losing my train of thought. I need it, it's you just I can't split my attention like that. Two I need beautiful focus. people on screen at once and Cody and Brandy. That is a lot of uh, distraction. Yes, yes. And there's just, you know, the snark in me just wants to know what they're saying so I can comment on it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. We had, a lot of, we had a lot of fun discussing um, the show. What did you think of Roads to the Top last week? Um, I really liked the parts where I got backstage peeks at uh, how AEW works. Yeah. Um, I liked the hard to take brandy parts and the obviously contrived uh, brandy segments of where uh, wrestlers were fighting over whether they were slapped too hard. Um, I don't think that was real and I right, uh, felt yeah. my intelligence was a bit insulted, but um, 
it was not the complete and utter train wreck I thought it was going to be going in. I'm wondering if the whole weigh-in debacle was staged for the drama on tonight's show. I got to watch this. Speaking of intelligence being insulted, do you think they tanked that on purpose in order to have drama on this reality show? It just crossed my mind watching them promo it tonight. Like, could that have been like a work? Oh, man, I hope not. I do, too. Yeah. I'll see how they present it tonight. I mean, probably not. It's just, you know, a happy accident. Um, I don't know if Cody would want. But, you know, it's like it's like Cody's kind of it seems like he's taking pride in like, you know, highlighting, oh, my God, this is a disaster. And there's Tony Khan, you know, just what, what's the, not uh, saw not sighing, um, you know, exasperated and just like, oh, God, this is a disaster. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, we got a lot from uh, Dynamite to talk about. So, yeah, give us a call. Uh, 347-215-8558. Push one on your keypad. Later tonight, VIP members and our Patreon supporters can hear my full rundown of Dynamite. I do it after Raw, Dynamite, and SmackDown every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on the VIP exclusive Wade Keller Hotline. A start to finish rundown of the show. So if you don't take time or don't have time to watch the shows, you can get a 20 to 35 minute recap. Um, I do not tune out the announcers like um, some people maybe uh, do to keep their sanity. I'll I'll let you know what the announcers are saying, good and bad, and uh, my take on every segment. And my reaction to it, and then just kind of details on the high points of the matches and the promos. So if you aren't able to watch all the shows, especially now some of you are going to be choosing to watch your baseball playoffs or NBA or NHL games um, or, you know, Monday night football. And if you just want to uh, listen that night or the next morning and feel caught up, um, the thorough chronological start to finish rundown of shows um, is available for VIP members. PWTorch.com slash go VIP or patreon.com slash PWTorchVIP are the ways to, uh, the places to go to uh, get information on signing up. And when you do that, shows like this, the free shows, we have a separate feed for those for our members, and those are ad-free. We take out the uh, the third-party ads in the in-house plugs, and uh, it's a much more streamlined listening experience, as you can imagine, on that, uh, on that format. And it is compatible with Apple Podcasts with a single click. And uh, a bunch of podcasts, more than ever on Android and Apple, or you can stream right from our VIP exclusive ad free website, which is mobile friendly. For 75 years, AIR has used evidence to improve lives. Over the next five, we're investing more than $100 million into social science research so we can build upon a body of evidence that will inform policies and fight systemic inequality. It's called the AIR Equity Initiative, and it's how we'll bridge the gaps that hold us back. Learn more about how we're applying our know-how to right now at AIR.org slash equity. We hope you're enjoying this podcast sponsored by U.S. Bank. U.S. Bank has had endless stories of taking side gigs to the next level. Their recipe to success is simple, providing the support and partnership you need, just like a family member would bringing you that peace of mind that is much needed, but also sprinkling you with confidence to strive for greatness. Because the sky's the limit, and they'll make sure you get there. U.S. Bank. We'll get there together. Back to the episode. Every day, thousands of hackers try to steal your crypto. But Arculus uses air-gapped technology by forming a protective barrier that insulates you from hackers and secures your crypto. Order yours at GetArculus.com. Check out our new 2021 PW Torch VIP podcast lineup, including Everything with Rich Fan, hosted by Wade Keller, where on weekends we get together and talk about everything. And that includes our popular Off the Beaten Path segment, where either Rich or I present each other with something to watch that's Off the Beaten Path, and we dissect and analyze and react to it. Sometimes it's weird, sometimes it's nostalgic, sometimes it's therapeutic. And sometimes it's just plucking something from the past that would work today that's not being done. But we talk about uh, WWE, NXT, AEW, all the current events in professional wrestling also. It's a different format and a fresh podcast dynamic with Rich and me. Every weekend, everything with Rich Fan is part of the new PW Torch VIP podcast lineup for 2021. Bundling home and car insurance with GEICO is so easy, your neighbors are probably already doing it. But who? They may drop little hints like... Beautiful day out. Even more beautiful since we saved by bundling our home and car insurance with GEICO. Or... Yard work is hard. Much harder than bundling with GEICO, which was easy. Or it may be even subtler, like... 
Speaking of burgers, we bundled our home and car insurance with GEICO and saved a bunch of money. Bundling is easy with GEICO. Just ask your neighbors. And now it's GEICO's Motorcycle Rules of the Road. Before you ride, make sure your mirrors are clean and adjusted properly. And if you're going on a group ride, make sure the lead biker knows where they're going. Uh, Ed, quick question. Where are you taking us? Oh, I have no idea. What, well, am I the leader? <laughs> because I was uh, following that dude with the red helmet. Where, Where is he? And the rule to saving on motorcycle insurance is, in 15 minutes, GEICO could save you 15% or more. Every day, thousands of hackers try to steal your crypto. But Arculus uses air-gapped technology by forming a protective barrier that insulates you from hackers and secures your crypto. Order yours at GetArculus.com. All right, let's get to uh, phone calls to begin with here, and then we'll get to emails later. And we'll begin with Hitton in uh, London, Ontario. Hitton, welcome to the show. What would you think of Dynamite? What stood out? So, yeah, it was a good good show tonight. I wanted to follow up with uh, the, the Cody Road stuff. Um, so Arn Anderson today is basically talking to Cody. He's asking him to become a wrestler again, burning his suits. Um, now, I'm concerned that if they both turn heel this way, um, people automatically start cheering Cody um, because, of course, the wrestler Cody is over, right? It's the self-indulgent wannabe Hollywood star that's not. So uh, I'm not you know, terribly concerned, but uh, it, it, it kind of caught my eye today. So what did you make of this? this segment of Arn Anderson kind of saying, hey, let's ditch the Hollywood stuff and let's be, you know, pro wrestlers again. Um, and is this the right direction to go for the heel game? Yeah, well, I do not think they're turning Cody heel by having him take Arn's advice and drop the Hollywood stuff and the expensive suits and the pink ties. That's a babyface turn, basically, for a guy who's getting booed. So either, Eric, they're trying to get Cody cheered again by acknowledging what is turning people off to Cody that they imagine that he lives in a mansion with the finest suits and he's more concerned about crossover celebrityhood and placating his wife's desires to to be a star more than he is getting getting in the ring and being a workhorse for the company or ultimately Cody is going to reject Arn's advice and say Hollywood being Hollywood Cody is a lot more fun than gritty wrestler Cody that Arn wants me to be so screw Arn and he just leans into it. Um, and it, it seems like those are the only two directions. I can't imagine they're tone deaf enough to think the way to turn Cody heel is to have him drop the pink ties and and flaunting uh, crossover projects and having him like start wrestling, focusing on wrestling again. Your thoughts? I mean, I my notes say we're witnessing the deconstruction of Cody Rhodes. So yeah. he's, you know, fire is a, uh, you know, in literature and in movies is symbolic. It's, you know, it burns the old and uh you know you rise phoenix rising from the ashes type uh thing um uh, th- this segment was weird by the way eric eric don't give cody more ideas for more elaborate gaudy ring entrances phoenix is rising from the fire you know he's like, taking notes now on how to incorporate i'm that. pretty sure that's one of the harry potter books uh <laughs> <laughs> the um this segment was weird to me because there wasn't really a reason it was pre-produced and there wasn't really a reason for Ard to be there. I mean, did Ard bring his own camera crew? It was one of those fakey wrestling, uh, you know, WWE time honored kind of segments that you just kind of got to roll with it and not really ask why Arn is started a fire on Cody's uh, backyard or front yard and, and, uh, and, and why he's there. Um, I, it looks like this segment was really edited down it because not a lot of it aired. I mean, it wasn't a very long segment. It might have been a minute, uh, and it also had one of the best lines of the night, which was Arn saying, "Why don't you just paint a star on your face?" Ouch! <laughs> Stardust uh, taking it uh, taking it on the chin. Um, but yeah, I, I guess I'm curious as to where this goes. Yeah. Uh, I I I Cody I think was quoted somewhere in a recent interview saying he's not turning heel. You know, this being wrestling, Cody could be working. Um, who knows? Uh, we will find out, and hopefully Cody does – you know, where does this end up? Does this end up with Cody finally beating Malachi Black uh, and uh, reclaiming his his glory? Um, per- perhaps it's Arn's way of asking Cody to take his own advice that he gave to Brandy last week on Roads to the Top. You know, nothing wrong with starting your way uh, at the bottom and working yeah. your way up. 
That's right. Yeah, which Brandy seemed uh, completely unreceptive to because I'm Brandy Rhodes. Um, Hinton, uh, back to you. Did I mute you? It's hard yeah, to mute. No, uh, there you are. Point. I guess we'll wait and see on that one. Um, yeah, I guess we'll wait and see on that one. Um, yeah. So uh, I, I want to move on to the TBS championship presentation. Um, and I've had a chance to pay attention to the AEW women's mid card a lot more since I've been doing the rampage with the missus. Um, and I'm really curious to see how they pull this off because let's say someone like Jade Cargill wins, um, you know, who, who are her opponents? We've got Red Velvet, um, Tay Conti, who I think is probably the best of the bunch, and a Jay who I much preferred as as a heel, to be honest with you. Um, neither of these guys are, you know, top tier. Um, Hikaru Shida, um, AEW hasn't done as good a job with, with Shida as, as, they, as uh, WWE did with uh, Io Shirai, for example. Um, and if a babyface wins, um, the challengers are even more sparse. I mean, besides Jade, Jade Cargill, who, you know, isn't that good in the ring yet and, uh, you know, can't afford to be just another challenger, you've got the Bunny and Penelope Ford just by virtue of the amount of TV time they've, got, they've gotten on, on Rampage. Um, maybe Nyla Rose, but you know, again, she's, she's just lower on the pecking order based on TV time. So uh, how are you guys, what are you guys thinking is the best case scenario for this uh, AEW women's mid card? Uh, Erica, I'll throw to you on that. Your, your thoughts on the TBS title um, and all aspects of it, including what Hinton uh, focused on. I think Hitton has put a lot more thought into the AEW women's division mid card than anybody in AEW would be my guess. First of all, um, it's a TBS championship tournament that's taking place on TNT, but the finals are on TBS. Is that, did I hear that correctly? I, I kind of have to piece that together a little bit. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little, I, I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't pick up on the, the scheduling and the logistics of it. Um, yeah. I mean, you I know, whatever. It, I mean, it's, you know, the TNT title will be defended on Dynamite still, even though they're going to still call it the TNT title. So, I, I mean, in a way, it's sort of like if we we have to kind of detach ourselves from thinking the title will only be defended on the network it's named after and just think of it more as a tribute to, you know, Jim Crockett promotions and, and the 80s cable expansion and then in, in the 80s with TBS and then uh, the, the Nitro boom in, in the 90s and just see them as sort of, you know, acknowledging the legacy channels that have been historically significant in pro wrestling's non WWE evolution. Uh, Hitton's question, though, gets at the very uh, core problem here, though, <laughs> that AEW has with its women division, which is a cynic might say, geez, Louise, they can barely book one women's singles championship. How in the hell are they going to book two uh, singles women's championships? Yeah. Um, I guess they sort of did a little bit when they had the NWA title in-house. And as for who's going to win that tournament, I would think think you might want i mean if you've got two singles titles generally you want to have a face hold one and a heel hold another um i'm not sure where brit fits in because she gets cheered yeah. as a heel but i mean she's certainly positioned as a heel still uh and it depends on you know you got to serve service the w- women's world title brit's title first so who who wins that um tbs title i think it depends on who they're going to uh who they're going to have Brit wrestle at full gear and then you can kind of figure it out from there. Cause probably that person isn't in the tournament or splits off from that, uh, splits off after being in that tournament and lose, uh, you know, uh, and so you have, uh, the focus, sorry, I'm uh, rambling and, and fumbling here. Turn off roads to the yeah, whoever, top. Stay focused, Eric. Who, whoever, <laughs> whoever, whoever, whoever they have for, challenging Brit probably doesn't need to be in the women's tournament depending on when they start it and so if you're going to have Thunder Rosa uh, are you going to have her challenge Brit at full gear are you going to have Sheeta those are the two most like two most likely challenges for Brit so I guess whoever doesn't uh, get the full gear match maybe you can put the women's title on them or I mean you know putting the belt on uh, Jade Cargill she's pretty mm-hmm. green uh, I know they're high on her and yeah. have hopes for the future, but she's not going to have, I mean, I guess she could have long matches against uh, experienced women's opponents, but there are, you know, those are sort of few and far between at this point in AEW. Uh, Eric, before I throw it back to Hinton, would you have rather had, like I would have rather had women's tag team titles, the TBS tag team titles, so that 
I just don't think the women's division is deep enough to justify two singles titles. And I think, you know, we can argue the TNT title takes away a little bit from the AW world title. Um, I, I'm fine with it. I mean, I, you know, I grew up watching the IC title be the secondary title to the WWF championship. And, and that worked well. You know, there's a way to do that well. Uh, but there's just too many titles. You know, I mean, just in general, uh, there's been an overabundance. And I think one of the things about AEW's brand is that, and, and this is kind of why I was like really down on like the lights out and lights on gimmick with Dark Order at the very beginning. It's like, can we break away from some, and, and even distraction finishes now. It's like, they should be self-aware and counter-programming things that you could make a reasonable case for except for the fact that WWE ruined them. And I think that's what has happened with championships. There's just too many of them. NXT, I mean, there's like how many singles titles? The 205 Live title and the North American title. and the X. It's just like, so to me, I'd just rather have one women's title. It's not a deep enough division, as you said at the very top of your answer, to justify barely one championship some weeks or some months. So just have tag titles. And that actually would help solve one of the problems, which is there's so many green women who aren't having great matches that tag team wrestling actually allows women to take in and out. You can have a worker who doesn't have a great personality with somebody who isn't as good of a worker, like a Jade Cargill, who has more of that personality and presence. It solves more issues. I'd rather have tag titles than another women's singles title. Um, I'd rather have a trios title. Uh, you mean myself. six man tag. I'm, I'm sorry. A, a six man title i uh yes. yeah i forgot that's you one of your bugaboos with, the, well, the list is so the list of <laughs> wade's bugaboos is so long that it's a book in it itself it's 50 long i can send it to you but yeah. it, it just it's so precious to call it a trails title it's with the war von erickson and freebirds come on six man tag team titles you were of that generation eric i i am in fact yes. of the generation yes. um i i mean i guess can you you, do you double the problem if you have a women's tag title and that you've got to find four wrestlers <laughs> to, who are well, ready to pit but, against each other on, on network what, television? But what about uh, my logic that you can cover up weaker workers yeah. in a tag match who are greener? They can take in and out, catch their breath. You can have one worker with a weaker worker who you want to develop. I don't know. I just – it's in, in the I'm just, scarred by that yeah. uh, they had a women's tag team tournament, right, that Diamante and Eva Lee won, I think, uh, last year maybe? Um, do you remember this? Is this ringing a bell? I bet you Hinton. I think you're making it up. It. Hinton, did that happen? <laughs> no, I, I don't remember. <laughs> they gave them medals at the end. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a, rec- a recollection. Yeah, I don't think you dreamed that, Eric. Yeah, and so you know, I mean, there were some pretty bad matches in that tournament. So <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just scarred from it. Yeah. Yeah. Now through Patreon, you can get the Wade Keller Pro Wrestling Post Shows, Wade Keller Pro Wrestling Podcasts, and the PW Torch Daily Casts with the ads and plugs removed and VIP after shows by supporting us on Patreon with a Tier 1 membership for just $4.99 per month. You can also upgrade to get additional bonus content, including all the VIP podcasts and the PW Torch newsletters through Patreon. Check out details at patreon.com slash PWTorchVIP. That's patreon.com Slash PW Torch VIP. This Halloween. No, that's impossible. <laughs> don't get caught. Did you check the basement or the bedroom? Without the perfect thing. <laughs> They're both out. To treat every taste. Well, that's it. We're out of Fanta. No! This Halloween. Don't live with the horror of being without Fanta. Get yours today. Fall is a season of gathering that brings us together with warmth and color. So whether it's a birthday, anniversary, or a special event, celebrate your friends and family with a gorgeous bouquet of roses from 1-800-Flowers.com. 1-800-Flowers makes it easy to brighten someone's day with 24 multicolored roses for just $39.99. To get 24 multicolored roses for just $39.99, visit 1-800-Flowers.com slash tune in. That's 1-800-Flowers.com slash tune in. Every Sunday night, catch Wrestling Night in America on PWTorchDailyCast.com, hosted by me, PW Torch columnist Greg Parks. Each week, I'll welcome a co-host from the Torch family to discuss the big shows in pro wrestling, taking your calls and emails. You can listen live most weeks beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern. 
On Sunday nights with a WWE or Impact pay-per-view, we go on the air at the conclusion of that pay-per-view. You can listen live, but of course the full show is available for download on demand anytime shortly after it airs. Visit PWTorchDailyCast.com and click the live stream link to find the next scheduled live show link. Search PW Torch in Apple Podcasts or your podcast app to subscribe. Wrestling Night in America every Sunday, PWTorchDailyCast.com. Want to hear something amazing? Discover matches all the cash back you earn on your credit card at the end of your first year, automatically, dollar for dollar, with no limit on how much you can earn. Extra cash? Come on, how amazing is that? In fact, it's even more amazing when you realize all the places where Discover is accepted. 99% of places in the U.S. that take credit cards. So when it comes to Discover, get used to hearing yes more often. Learn more at discover.com slash yes. 2021 Nielsen Report. Limitations apply. Okay, we're at home with Jen, who is taking out the trash. That's right, and goodness, look at that designer sweater and jeans combo. Oh, she is nailing that cozy, casual look. Oh, she's opening the can, and the trash is in. She is working that driveway. Well, with Marshall's amazing prices on designer fall fashions, no one can blame her for feeling this fabulous. Whoa. Whoa! Oh, just look at that lipstick. Better get to Marshall's. Oh, I'm leaving right now. Fabulous brands. Feel good prices at, at Marshall's. Marshall's. Fall is the most birthday-packed season of the year, so chances are you have a few celebrations coming up. Make sure your friends and family feel special with a gorgeous bouquet of roses from 1-800-Flowers.com. 1-800-Flowers makes it easy to send the perfect gift. 24 multicolored roses for just $39.99. To get 24 multicolored roses for just $39.99, visit 1-800-Flowers.com slash tune in. That's 1-800-Flowers.com slash tune in. Well, anyway, hint back to you. We talked about a lot. What do you, any reaction to that or any other topic? You know, the, the, the only women's tournament I remember is the one that Rio Mizunami was in, huh? <laughs> which I think was for the championship. Um, and no good points. I think I agree with Wade. Tag titles might have been a little better, but I mean, ultimately, w- w- one of the other problems with the women's division is, of course, there's just a lack of good stories. Uh, I wasn't a fan of, uh, you know, Britt Baker and Ruby Soho just trading meta barbs at each other. There's there just no... Kenny Omega, the guy who books the women, he's just incapable of writing good stories for them. Um, but that's uh, that's all of the conversation for another day. I, I want to move on to the, the TNT title match. Just some brief thoughts on there. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure about Bobby Fish being Sammy Guevara's uh, first opponent uh, w- w- when they have such a large roster of talent. Um Jim Ross during this match, uh, when they're talking about how Miro lost, was like, well, Miro's not leaving the territory. <laughs> I'm like, well, what's that supposed to mean? If he was going to leave, he would have lost. Like, sure, you just keep ramming in our face how fake this all is, right? Um, and uh, during the post-match brawl at the end, uh, how did you like 50-year-old Jericho uh, being able to outpunch <laughs> Junior Dos Santos, who I'm not terribly familiar with, but I'm told he's a Hall of Fame UFC legend, so... <laughs> yeah that was a little a little that was pretty special um i mean it is you know they're the mma guys are visiting the pro wrestling world and there's you know pro wrestling rules and jericho's a former world champion and you know tough tough guy and jake hager is is quote successful in both uh, although you can argue whether he's successful in either in certain ways but um i that that's mean but you know he's not like a he's not brock lesnar um, in either, I'll put it that way, um, or or you know, multi-sport like a Kurt Angle or something like that. So yeah, uh, we ha- so Eric, your thoughts on on the uh, the MMA guys in in Hinton's previous point? Um, well, the the match itself, the TNT title match, man, the crowd was dead during that match. It was it was very quiet. Yeah. Um, I like that they did a little inset promo. They did a Bobby Fish promo and then a Sammy inset promo that he bought the truck for Fuego. That was about all I liked. They gave, I thought they gave Bobby Fish a lot here for kind of a one-off Cody-style challenger um, when Cody held the belt. Um, I, You know, the thing I liked the most about this segment was Dan Lambert cutting the music and the fans didn't miss a beat. They just kept <laughs> singing the Jericho uh, Judas uh, theme song and uh, really liked that uh, Philly crowd uh, pepping back up after uh, being dead for that match. Um 
I'm curious to see. I think they said Junior Dos Santos is going to be in a six-man tag with uh, Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page uh, down in Miami. Yeah, uh, is that I is think... that the Saturday show a week a week from Saturday? Um, yeah. Boy, I I hope they teach uh, Mr. Dos Santos how to work a little bit uh, before then because his punches his his work. fake punches didn't look great. I imagine his shoot punches <laughs> look really good. Yeah, I, I figure in a in a six man tag you can be protected a little bit, uh, but yeah, it's 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 tough when you got an MMA guy who can just you know give you a concussion with one strike and knock you out cold, having to you know pull back um, on that. So it's it's a little bit awkward. As for Bobby Fish getting the title shot, I don't like it. I mean, I get why they do it. It's like oh, you know, here's a guy from NXT and he issued a challenge on Twitter, and it's sort of like I'll fight anyone if you're Sammy Guevara, but. If, if, you know, I, I go back to that initial press release, you know, this is going to be a sports-like presentation. And, and they called it a league, not a promotion, you know, trying to pull sports terms in. And, you know, we get win-loss records flashed on the screen. You know, Hangman Page, 11-1 and 20, in 2021. Why are there just, you know, give me some reason why some, you know, random challenge on Twitter leads to the first defense being against a guy who is 0-0 zero in, zero in AEW. And I don't know what his record was in NXT over the past two years, but I don't think it was very good either. Um, he was, you know, the 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 you know third or fourth wrong in in undisputed era. Um, they didn't play off of that Adam Cole connection, so I don't know. It just, yeah. I mean, it, it felt like oh, we'll get some you know PR out of this, but it just doesn't make you know storyline logic sense to just hand a title shot to somebody like that. I, I do think you should have to earn it, and I think the Met fans would have been more into it. But I think a larger issue than that, because, I mean, there's some benefit to the novelty of, you know, this guy fresh out of NXT getting a shot and, you know, Sammy, I'll fight anybody. Um, but Sammy, I just don't know if Sammy's that over as a baby face. Like, Eric, I, Sammy was such a good heel. And I feel I watched him try to cut baby face promos on AW Dark. Uh, I don't know if it was a year ago or earlier this year. I don't, the timeline's a bit of a blur. But um, and they weren't good. You know, he was just he was just dying out there. There's just not his baby face personality. I mean, this isn't an era in a company with fans who are going to boo, you know, Jungle Boy types. But Sammy just, he's hes super nice. I just don't think he's particularly compelling as a babyface. And he was a great heel. So I, I think, and the, the crowd was mic'd well. They reacted to a lot of stuff. I am a little bit worried about his trajectory uh, under this babyface character. I'm not saying for sure it's not going to work, but it just, it was working so well as a heel. Uh, your, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, he's a more natural heel, more natural charisma as a heel. Um, I think having having uh, a baby face a e having a baby face TNT champion makes sense because you have a, a heel in Kenny Omega holding your other belt, so you you, you mix up the uh, faces and the heels and who can challenge. Sammy brings to the table, uh, you know, smaller guys can work with him. Uh, well, or bigger guys because he can do the baby face in peril from underneath type uh, match. Um, I guess I I understand your uh, where you're at on Sammy as a baby face, not super inspiring yet, but I like that they're sort of elevating one of their own and one of their younger wrestlers, um, especially when you contrast that with what they did to Jungle Boy again tonight. Good lord, they keep beating him. They're mm-hmm. they're gonna. They're gonna, uh, you know, I don't. Want, I'm not gonna say they're gonna. They're burying him this way, but you know, it couldn't anybody else have uh, have done the job in that match, um, in that opening eight man tag, which was otherwise excellent. In fact, there's a, a mailbag question on that on the Wade Keller Processing Podcast, our Blue Logo show that drops tonight for everyone that we dropped last night for our members, and that is uh, is AW having too many of their homegrown guys like Jungle Boy lose too often, and. And, and in some cases at the expense of people that they're signing from outside. And there there is a risk. You know, I mean, some of them are just young enough where it, it isn't going to matter. You know, you want to strike with, you know, Brian Danielson. Well, you know, well, he's a hot signing and all that. But th- you got to be careful that it doesn't look like, you know, the guys that we pushed for the first year and a half, they were good. But, oh, man, these WWE guys, they're great. You know, you got you to watch out for telling that story. And I'd much rather have Luchasaurus doing the jobs here. Uh, than Jungle Boy, and I don't really see a downside to that. Um, Hinton, uh, back to you. Uh, any follow-up on any of that or any uh, closing topic otherwise? 
Yeah, I just wanted to reiterate that there was a very brief promo from Rampage by Sammy Guevara. And the only reason I remember this is because I actually cover Rampage uh, for, for the torch. And there's like this 30 second promo where he ends with uh, Bobby Fish, I'm going to send you to hell. But he has a beaming smile on his face. It's not even a sadistic smile. It's just, hey, look at me. I just won the title and I'm still happy. And, you know, the thrill hasn't gone away. And I'm saying words that are meant to sound aggressive, but I just I can't take this match seriously. And I'm just a happy little baby face. And my God, it didn't work for me at all. And so I, I, I concur with the point that this guy is a baby face. Oh, it's, it's just not, he, he's just playing the part of pro wrestler. He's not actually emotionally investing me, unless he's like physically in the ring and doesn't talk. Um, so I concur with that. But uh, I, I've got nothing else for you guys. Thank you very much for taking my call. I'll, I'll concede to other callers now. Thank you. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Hitton. When you vote in Virginia, you can vote with confidence knowing every election is safe, secure, and accessible. Our certified election registrars and volunteers follow strict processes and procedures to make sure every vote counts. These safeguards include validating registered voters during early, absentee, and election day voting, voting machines that are never connected to the internet, and ballot boxes that are locked and sealed. Learn more at vote.virginia.gov. Hear that? That's the sound of someone trying to steal your crypto. Every day, thousands of hackers online are doing the same. That's why Arculus uses air-gapped cold storage technology to protect your assets. Using our keycard and wallet app to form a protective barrier, Arculus insulates you from hackers and puts control of your digital assets back in your hands. Order the first truly air-gapped crypto wallet at GetArculus.com. Hey guys, it's Mike McMahon from the All Elite After Show. Every week, Andrew Socek and I break down AEW on our free PW Torch podcast. We've been doing this show since 2016. That's right. We're on our fifth year. When we started the show back then, we were talking just Impact Wrestling, and we still talk about them from time to time as well. And over the years, we've branched out to also discuss MLW, and of course, the main event of our program, which is always the latest going on in AEW. Again, the show is called the All Elite After Show with me, Mike McMahon, and my partner, Andrew Socek. You can check us out as part of the PW Torch Daily Cast lineup. You can subscribe to our show and all of the Daily Cast shows just by searching PW Torch on any podcast. Podcast app, and of course, you can listen ad free with a PW Torch VIP membership. Fall is the most birthday packed season of the year, so chances are you have a few celebrations coming up. Make sure your friends and family feel special with a gorgeous bouquet of roses from 1800flowers.com. 1-800-Flowers makes it easy to send the perfect gift. 24 multicolored roses for just $39.99. To get 24 multicolored roses for just $39.99, visit 1-800-Flowers.com slash tune in. That's 1-800-Flowers.com slash tune in. So let's go to uh, Boris in Chicago. Hey, let me, just, let, me, let, me just, let me just say hi, Wade, because it's been a while. How do we how do we get to the point where you know we know that Adam Page has to be a champion, but should he be now? Should he be the champion now when we should run with either CM Punk or Daniel Bryan? All right. So um, we talked earlier about the choice um, of world champions and who should be next. Um, I, I put up a uh, poll earlier this week and asked. You know, who do you want to see be the next, the person who unseats Kenny Omega? Hangman Page ran away with it um, in the voting, um, beating Brian Danielson by a wide margin. And I'm on that page. Um, do you see a danger in uh, either going with Hangman Page now and having him be the guy who unseats Kenny? Is that, you know, the old dog catching the bumper? Now what? And Or have they dragged it on or delayed it? long enough that you just got to kind of get to it. It You want to establish, and my argument is you want to establish, we're not, you know, it's kind of like the J- Jungle Boy doing the job while others are being protected to our recent signings. You kind of want to send a message to fans, you know, Hangman's the original guy. 
and he he gets his turn before these other people. Or do you just keep Kenny as champ longer and kind of keep Hangman's dream something that's just not quite, hasn't quite been attained yet? And that's actually a compelling hook that is actually kind of defining his character. And that winning it is sort of sort of like Punk showing up in AEW where he he won a, a wrestling promotion he doesn't hate. And so it's like, now what? You know, if, if Hangman wins it, is there sort of a now what moment? I mean, I think uh, you would have to have some good heel challengers ready to go for Hangman Page so he doesn't flounder as champion. I think Tony Khan has shown he doesn't, you know, Kenny Omega would have had the belt for about 11 months. I think he won it in early December of 2020. So um, 11 months in the AEW is a long title reign. I think Jericho's was, what, five or six months, and um, Moxley's was about 10 months. So uh, they don't change the belt often. I think it's time to go with Paige. He is a homegrown guy. He has a ton of momentum. He was gone on a, you know, on a newborn leave for uh, nearly two months. He came back. He got a great reaction tonight. It's time to go with him and pay off the story. If he doesn't win the title uh, this time, uh, you kill him, I think. I mean, I think uh, it would be a very WWE thing to do to, to have him not win the title. Um, you would just be cutting his legs off. And if it doesn't work for whatever reason, it ain't like you don't have a whole deep bench <laughs> to uh, to put the belt on. You know, Brian Danielson, CM Punk, uh, Adam Page is being built. Um, uh, sorry, Adam Cole. Uh, Adam Cole is being built up. So too many, too many pages and Coles and Adams in this promotion. And uh, so you can, you can always change, change the belt at uh, the at revolution in February, right? If it doesn't work out. Um, but I, I, my guess is if they have uh, strong opponents for him after he wins the, if he wins the title that, uh, you know, see where it goes, give him a five, six month or longer run. And uh, you've got your homegrown guy at the top who the fans love. And let's do it. Yeah, I, I think if you don't, th- if, if the ground isn't fertile for a successful Hangman Page title run, don't do it. I don't think giving it to him because you think you should and you have to and you've waited too long, and, but you're not committed to it. You, you can only have him win that title the right way. You can only have him win the title once. So you want it to be the right way. You want it to be successful. If you pull it from him, I just think, you know, you, you really lose something you can't get back. I, I'm not too worried about it, though. I just think he's, you know, if I don't think there's any way to know ahead of time if it's not going to work. But the signs are there that he's really over. And tonight, you know, further affirmed that in front of the Philly fans. I, I you know, are his matches going to be as good as Brian Danielson's? I, I don't know. Um, but they're going to be in range, you know, in range enough. To, to be world title worthy, I think. And I think there's plenty of heels, including Christian Cage hasn't turned yet. Cody Rhodes hasn't turned yet. Um, those are those are options. Heck, Moxley, you know, maybe he'll right. turn. Um, but, I mean, Heyman Page against Adam Cole after he gets done with Kenny Omega, that could be awesome. I, I just think there's plenty of options that you can headline pay-per-views. Um, you know, Miro, uh, now that he's dropped the TNT title, they can kind of, you know, put him in a different lane and, and build him up towards a world title challenger. I just think there's great options for him. I do that. I think Brian Danielson can be completely, I think they may just find, you know, I still worry and maybe I shouldn't be as worried that, that the, that sort of second million AW, you know, building right now, they're going to see Brian Danielson as the AW world champ. And it might seem a little bit like a WWE spinoff where, you know, it's not original people on top, and anybody from the other company just makes it to the top. And I, I, that hasn't been the history, but, you know, Jericho and Moxie were champions. Um, and so you got to be careful about that. And I think Danielson could add to that. So that's my case for Paige. And, or, or, or just keep it on Kenny. But I don't think you give it to someone else. I think it should be one of those two at least in early next year. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at how far Hangman Page has come. I remember being at the first All Out and he was in the main event against Chris Jericho, and the winner was going to get the AEW championship, the inaugural champion. And the uh, the match was so-so. The crowd was dead for it because the, I think there was uh, 
Lucha Brothers Bucks ladder match that preceded it, maybe, um, that just completely drained the crowd because it was nuts. And and I thought, man, Hangman Page, he's he's kind of floundering here, and and they've built him up, and uh, he's still not probably the greatest on promos. I mean, he's. I'm interested to see what you know him you know break out of a fiery babyface promo. Uh, you know, previewing his title match against Kenny Omega. Um, maybe AW is pretty good about uh, putting people in a position to succeed rather than fail. So maybe that's a pre-tape or a sit down with JR or Tony Schiavone uh, ahead of the match that, uh, that helps get uh, page over uh, on, on a promo level. That's, you know, not, uh, not probably his strongest, uh, th- his strongest uh, aspect. Uh, thanks Boris for the call, by the way. Aloha, Torch Faithful. This is Kelly Wells, host of PWT Talks NXT. Every Thursday, you can hear me and my gang of idiots, Tom Stout, who shares thoughts from the live tapings, and Torch recapper Nate Lindbergh, as well as a rotating cast of guests, cover the matches and events in NXT Live on USA Network. Search PW Torch in Apple Podcasts or your podcast app to subscribe. Or listen on demand and see the entire PW Torch Daily Cast schedule at pwtorchdailycast.com. Cheers! Uh, Alex Montreal, you're up next. Go ahead and uh, tell us what you thought of Dynamite tonight. Hey guys, uh, thanks for taking my call. Uh, the word I would use to describe today's show is probably rewarding. Um, just thinking about it being, you know, two years of dynamite and everything and watching the ladder match in particular, um, when Hangman and Pac, you know, had their kind of portion of the match, I thought back to the very first episode of dynamite where they squared off. I thought of like revolution 2020 when it started with, uh, Pac and orange Cassidy. And I don't know. I just thought that, um, for people who have been paying attention and have been going on this journey for this two for these two years, that match in particular had a lot of little uh, moments like that that kind of rewarded you for being a long term viewer. Same with um, Serena Deeb and and Hikaru Shida, like as someone who you know you watched Shida become champion, disappear from Dynamite, and she comes back and has a performance like that. Which uh, when I say like that, I mean actually really strong. I thought her and Deeb had. Uh, a, quite a good match actually and i loved the finish right when they showed um Sheeta's trophy i thought she's losing she has to lose <laughs> like that that is like Ch- chekhov's trophy basically like they, they're gonna use it and and deeb has to nail her with it or something um and as someone who's like i've been waiting for deep to come back from injury um, because I, I, I've loved her matches, her and what she has contributed to AEW up until this point. Um, so I was really excited to see her and she uh, kind of square off. And it was one of those matches where I was crossing my fingers that everything would fall into place and that they would have the type of match that I kind of visualized that they could have given like their skill level and what I know about them and the past performances they have had. Um, so yeah, I was just really, um, happy i guess to and felt rewarded for kind of like following these people on their journeys over the last two years as we're talking about this being an anniversary show and everything um so yeah i just uh yeah that's, that's sorry that yeah. i don't know if there's a question in there but i no, guess well, we can talk about Sheeta and uh I, and deep with it. go ahead sorry. yeah i got a, a few things coming out of what you said first and foremost it's more of a macro topic and i want to ask eric this did they do enough to celebrate two years um I mean, like, I I know it's her second anniversary show. It's in the headline on my report. They mentioned it a couple times. But most of the show, I wasn't really thinking about that. Alex brings up great points. I mean, there are just, I won't call them Easter eggs, but there were tips of the hat, including Heyman coming back on this show. Uh, that it's sort of a tip of the hat to the, to the people who've been around for the ride. You know, the two years of Dynamite and really what came before it on pay-per-view. But I kind of wouldn't have minded a little extra coming in and out of the break. Just some big moments. Um mm-hmm. To remind us of of big dynamite moments, you know, just you know, you can do a countdown, or you know, there's been some great, you know, there's been great matches, there's been great victories, there's been big defeats, there's been big debuts, there's been comedy, and I would have liked to see them. I would have, I would like, 
I, I would have liked to see what they wanted us to remember about their first two years on the air to celebrate. Um, and I, I would have taken that in place of either the length or, or quantity of some of the other segments. How about you? Um, I think Tony Khan said either on Busted Open or on Twitter, this ain't going to be a clip show. <laughs> right. So yeah, yeah. Um, I, I guess the thing was so overbooked and so – well, not overbooked in a bad way, but just yeah. packed full of so many angles to set up future matches and uh, you know all of, and, and matches tonight that there really wasn't any room for it. And uh, every second – the other thing would be I think – people tend to flip the channel when you show them stuff that's not, you know, live wrestling action in the ring. Um, so probably they've, you know, they, they, it's never really been their hallmark to show even, I, I would prefer on their show a little bit more of here's what happened last week, right? Like yeah. recapping when, when it's relevant to an angle, they're a little bit better about that. But, um, I think the reward to the fans for the two year anniversary, the two year anniversary present from AEW to its fans was most of this show. It was good. Uh, yeah, I, I I think you can do one one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four. Like three and a half seconds coming in and out of breaks. That long of just quick little moments, you know, that that are just, you know, with the date on the bottom of the screen. And just a, just that little snippet coming in and out of breaks that kind of celebrates the history of Dynamite. I, I don't I don't know that you're going to actually lose viewers during that. I think you should have more faith in your fan base that they'll do that. So I would I would have pitched behind I would have I would have been an advocate behind the scenes um, for a little bit more of a of a tip of the hat to to uh, to our history. But no big deal. Um, anything else you want to bring up that that Alex brought up in terms of of the content of the show? Yeah, I was surprised by uh, the Deeb went over Sheeta tonight, and I think it, um, it it makes sense in hindsight. And it also probably it's going to lead to a rematch with a fifty fifty booking deal, uh, so that she Sheeta can get that fiftieth win. Because let's say I, I assume they're competent enough to not do a WCW messing with Goldberg's uh, win streak thing and have Sheeta get her fiftieth win on Dark next week, right? <laughs> right. I, I, That'd I, be I hilarious. Some somebody yeah. is uh, looking out for that uh, storyline, and I think um, it, the match kind of started slow, but it really picked up when Sheeta went on offense and the crowd got back into this one after being. Uh, being a, a little bit dead for uh, the, that Derby match, and so um, Deeb uh, Jr. really seemed surprised that Deeb was so heelish, but she was the heel in the in the match versus Riho back at Double or Nothing. I mean, I remembered Riho early in the match uh, reaching out for a, a, a handshake, and, and Deeb, sensing she needed to make herself the heel in this match, just slapped her across the face hard so she would get booed. So I, I don't know if it was a heel turn so much as uh, – maybe it was a heel turn just because the announcers forgot that Deeb has been heelish in her rare appearances on uh, Dynamite okay. in recent months. All right. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Well, Alex, back to you. Anything else we didn't touch on that you want us to? Or any other topic? Sure. Yeah, I had the same reaction with Jr. I was like, Jr., come on, you, you were there. Like, <laughs> she was absolutely a heel in the match against Riho, and um, even before that, uh, or uh, sorry, even after after that, when she was injured, um, I, I guess you'd have to follow the social media stuff a little bit. Like, she got a promo from a, a wheelchair, I believe, where you know she was calling herself the best woman in the division, woman of a thousand four thousand hold, and all this stuff. So it was uh, definitely very heelish. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I was a bit surprised by that. Uh, yeah, the other thing that I really liked, um, Dante Martin, I thought really popped off on, on this episode. Like my face, um, my mouth dropped <laughs> when the lights went out because I, you knew exactly who it was going to be. And that was one of literally one of the only, uh, well, I guess there were a couple of surprise moments, but that, that was like the biggest surprise moment and the biggest, um, holy shiznit moment for me um of the show just because i wasn't expecting it at all <laughs> i'm like okay who's going to challenge him who's going to step up to him and having it be malachi black uh and the way that they did it uh, i thought was really cool except for the second time the lights went out i'm like okay and then uh dante is on the outside for some reason I'm like okay i don't think you need to do that but uh the whole setup of that angle and dante sounding pretty good on the mic i thought was was really great um 
I'm not sure where they go from here. I mean, obviously, I think Dante can afford to take a loss to Malachi Black. Um, but, yeah, what did you think of that uh, that segment and, and where it's going to go? You know, I think it was highly appropriate for the lights to go out in Philadelphia, of all places. <laughs> that used to happen at ECW Arena yes. so much, you would think the power oh. grid was faulty. I, you know, you you said, uh, Eric, I got to say on that topic, Alex said he knew exactly who it was going to be. I so wanted it to be Sabu standing in the ring pointing at the ceiling. <laughs> I, I hope he would have gotten a big pop for that. And then uh, and then Malachi Black can come in and just kick his head off. I don't know. Uh, go, go, go ahead, Eric. I, I think uh, Dunt, so later in the show, after uh, they did the weekly recap of what's coming up on Rampage and what's coming up. On the next Dynamite, uh, Leo Rush cut a promo and he offered to help Dante Martin and <laughs> yep. guide him in his match versus Malachi Black, uh, which, uh, forget that, I want to see Leo Rush and Dante Martin in a spot fest to end all spot fests. <laughs> Give me that match. Well, that save might be where, for, that might be where we're headed. Uh, full gear. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I doubt, I, I knowing Dante as we do. Um, I doubt he's going to take Leo up on his offer. So my hunch is uh, Leo will take accept- exception to that, and and we'll get a uh, a nice match between those two. And I I, I think Spotfest is a uh, is a safe prediction on on the pace of the match. And, and, the and please don't hear that on like Dark Elevation. Like I want that on yeah. on Rampage or uh, on Dynamite. Yeah, and I, I Dante standing in the ring, and I it just crossed my mind. I'm like he doesn't like really have a gimmick. He's a young guy. It's like you wouldn't see that moment on WWE TV. You know, it's one of those things where it's like he's really talented. He's relatable. He's early in his career. We're watching his journey the way we watched, you know, Bret Hart's journey. If you followed the entirety of his career, it's just like it's a talented guy who's going to grow into being more. And it was like, cool. It's just like that's why I say have, you know, just Tony Khan has faith in his audience. You know, you know what AEW is. And. Part of that is the young guy who's really talented getting a chance to talk a little bit and be part of an angle, even if he's not going to be headlining your next pay-per-view. And even if he doesn't have a distinctive gimmicky personality, it just it, that's kind of that sports-like come along for the journey and re-reward talent. And we have likable baby faces who, you know, you, you, you want to you wanna see in the ring. So, uh, yeah, it just it worked for me. Uh, Alex, anything else before I let you go? Uh, no, that was just a thank you so much for that recap and that reading of how they use Dante and it being more like a sports-like feel. Uh, I agree 100%. So, uh, yeah, thanks great. so much, guys. Have a great show. Uh, really, really enjoyed Dynamite tonight. Enjoyed listening to you guys. Uh, thanks, Alex. Appreciate it. I sometimes, you know, we get we talk about kind of the new most newsy item, Eric, of the show, and then you know don't kind of sometimes I I look and I'm like, oh wait a second, I, I probably should mention that was like a really good opening match. And a really good closing match. And, like, we, I, I sort of, you know, sometimes you can take for granted the aspects of Dynamite that are just in AEW that are just reliable. And, I mean, we saw an eight-man tag match or a Quadros match um, with Kenny and the Bucks and Cole against Danielson and Christian and Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. And it was damn exciting. And it got 18 minutes. And it just, you know, it worked. Um, and then the, the ladder match was just, it was just like one kind of tease after another believable setup to what might be a finish and, and big spots. And frankly, and I, I'd have to rewatch to see if there's exceptions. It seemed like guys were kind of largely selling, you know, big spots. Um, you know, it was booked where guys weren't just popping up immediately after. I mean, it's still, you know, crazy based on it, others. Even they sold it even when they screwed the spot up. Yes. As it turned out, which yes. happened twice in that eight man tag. Uh-huh. Uh, they had that. Yeah botched indie taker to the outside where nick kind of padded uh christian on the butt because matt was set up too far too yep. far Nick couldn't jump that far and that would have been you know you could play that off even as comedy except unfortunately they were selling that as the injury that took yes. christian out of the match and gave the heels the win um and then later on how many how many heels does it elite heels does it take to uh get luchasaurus up for a power a group power bomb yeah uh, we still don't know the answer to that it was uh because four of them couldn't do it um but yeah I, I i liked that uh you know they they gave you a little bit of danielson and omega in that match but they made you wait for it and um and it felt like it, a moment when it happened 
one of the uh, one of my I, there were many good lines tonight, or at least that I put little stars around. And one of them was Jr. said, "Pardon the cliche." And Tony Schiavone, who says like five sentences the whole broadcast, uh, said, piped up with, "Oh, I love cliches." <laughs> <laughs> I think that. <laughs> that you know, I know Tony's sort of the Shivani's the mascot and all, but uh, uh, it's, it's it, truer words maybe perhaps have not been spoken on AEW Dynamite in its two years uh, than that. Funny, funny. We're now on Patreon. By popular demand, you can now support us directly through Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash PWTorchVIP. We have three tiers, including an entry level tier one that takes the ads and plugs away. You can have the VIP versions of the Wade Keller Pro Wrestling Podcast, Wade Keller Pro Wrestling Post Shows, and the PW Torch Daily Cast. That's 14 podcasts per week, but with the ads and plugs edited out, plus you get the VIP after shows. Don't be left out any more from those for just $4.99 at patreon.com slash PWTorchVIP. We also have a second tier and a third tier where you can upgrade to get other VIP content, including other VIP podcasts and the PW Torch newsletter, the current ones and 20 years ago version. So go check it out, patreon.com slash PW Torch VIP. All right, well, let's move to our on-site correspondent who is in the building tonight. I'm excited to talk to uh, Patrick Moynihan. He is a PW Torch contributor. He covers Rampage on PWTorch.com. Uh, Patrick, how you doing? Good to hear from you. Hey there, how you doing? How about this? Thanks for calling us. Uh, so it sounds like you're on your way home, not still in the building. Yes, I am on my way home. Uh, cool. I had to bail on a little bit of Rampage, unfortunately, but uh, you'll watch it Friday. It was a it was a good show. It was a phenomenal show. And now you got to watch it Friday. I'll yeah, you did. For sure, you, yeah. you were in the building, but you didn't want spoilers for what you're doing on Friday night. I like that. I respect that. <laughs> <laughs> I am true to my word. True to my word. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, uh, cool. So um, how? Just tell us about the 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 atmosphere in the building and. The, the kind of, the, yeah, just the vibe and, and the energy uh, in, in sure. general. And then we'll kind of hone in on specifics. But it's Philadelphia. It's AEW. Yeah, tell us about it. Yeah, so this is the second time I've been to Dynamite. I went uh, there for their third show back in 2019. And also my second time in the Leo Chorus Center. So that's um, kind of a newbie to that. Um, I'm more used to Wells Fargo, kind of a bigger arena. Um, that said, I mean, the crowd was hot. The crowd from start to finish. Um, the opener was huge as far as just, you know, reaction. I know um, you guys probably didn't see this on TV, but all of the uh, entrances for all eight men came out um, about 10 minutes prior to the start of the oh, show. Wow. Yeah. So we got, you know, a little bit of preview of that, you know, and uh, I'd say one by one, you pop pretty hard for, for each and every entrance there. Um, and I, I heard you guys talking about this, but, you know, just thinking, you know, obviously the beginning, the, the opener, and the main event were huge as far as crowd reaction. But again, like it was really a steady show in the middle too. Um, I think, you know, there were moments that I can think of that people got to their feet and, and reacted pretty well. Um, but just like a polite, uh, polite might not be the word, but just like everyone was really tuned in to what was happening in the ring, which was just nice to see as a, as a, as a fan. So um, overall really good reaction. And um no spoilers, of course, but uh, CM Punk got another just really strong reaction uh, when he came out for Rampage too. Yeah, that's good. The, the second pop isn't always, um, you know, it, sometimes there's a big drop off, um, so it's good. I I like I talk about actually I was going to ask something else, but talk about CM Punk and because we haven't brought this up yet, Eric either. Um, CM Punk, you know, talked about his history in Philadelphia and 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 just his history as as a wrestler and a trainer. Uh, it felt like he was trying to kind of, you know, let people know who don't know or have forgotten. He wasn't always a big time grumpy, dis, dis, like a big time disgruntled star from the, na- in, the international number one company fighting fighting management. His roots in the majority of his career was on the Indies. And he kind of covered that when he talked about Ring of Honor in his first promo. But this was also a way to go, you know, I... I I, this is what I like. I like immersing myself, and I think we're seeing someone who's who's talking to us and sharing his inner thoughts that are sincere, regardless of whether because he, he doesn't have like this this confidence of I, I know you're gonna you're I know what I'm gonna say, and I've got a chip on my shoulder. I'm gonna say it. It's it's a different punk. It's more reflective and introspective, and I'm still getting used to it. And he seems like kind of self aware that he's wondering if the fans are getting sick of it. 
I don't know if fans are going to get sick of Punk talking, uh, being happy as much as they're going to get sick of him wondering if we're sick of him talking about how happy he is. Um, so how, how did that all work out in terms of the, the promo? Because it seemed like the fans were into it. Yeah, the fans were absolutely into it. I don't think, um, I think the only hiccup that he had was mistaking cheesesteaks and cheesecakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that, that, it felt um, like, it felt like, the, it felt like he just thought he had made the biggest mistake of his life when he did that. When he, and I thought he was sort yeah. of being sarcastic. And then he realized the crowd <laughs> thought he didn't know if where the cheesecake stayed or the cheese. So, <laughs> and then his, yeah, just like the air just came out of the building and, and Punk got worried for a second. That was crazy. It, Totally true. I was so I was front row actually. I was in a, you know looking at the screen, bottom right corner, kind of um, of your TV for perspective. But I was so I could see his face throughout this promo, and that <laughs> what you said, Wade, is pretty spot on as far as kind of how he reacted in the ring. So I think he saved himself a little bit, um, <laughs> uh, thankfully for his sake. But that was the only hiccup. Other, otherwise, no. I think people really reacted to um, his promo. Uh, I couldn't really tell if there were many. Ring of Honor fans in the crowd, I'm sure there were, um, just kind of, you know, reflecting on his past there. Um, but yeah, again, um, I think the promo went over pretty well in the building. Uh, Eric, jump in with a question. Um, it, it seemed like the crowd died a little bit during the Sammy Guevara Bobby Fish match and a little bit during the Darby Nick Camaroto match. Was, was that the case? Yeah, I would say so. Um, I noticed that as well. Again, I, I think people were respectful as far as just kind of really being in tune to the matches, both of them. Um, but I noticed that as well. I think it was kind of a come down match, specifically the, the Guevara, um, until um, the post, you know, melee, the post of the post match melee. Um, but yeah, the crowd really died down a little bit there. Yep. yep. Um, who who got the biggest pop? Would you say tonight? Uh, Hangman, Punk, somebody else. I actually think Hangman's, um, when he came out as the Joker, I think that was the biggest pop. I think Punk's probably was sustained a little bit more. Um, But I'd say actually off camera, I think just because they started the show um, for the eight-man tag, I think those entrances really were were right up there as well, maybe two or three. Uh, Unfortunately, obviously, you didn't didn't see it on TV. Was there anyone, Patrick, who got less of a response than you thought they would or a different response than you would have predicted? Yeah. Yeah, I, w- I would have thought, I know he's new to AEW, but Bobby Fish, I thought he might get more of a reaction because he's been on TV. Um, not to say there you know, many people that watch AEW cross over to NXT necessarily, but, you know, he's just coming off that big run in NXT in the Undisputed Era. So I actually thought he would have a little bit more reaction. Again, maybe because the AEW fan base is a little different and... You know, to the point before, this was more of a come down match. So I don't know, but uh, yeah, that was probably the biggest surprise. I will just throw out this, and I'm, and then maybe you guys talked about this, but by far the biggest heel he left I heard all night and probably came off on TV is, was Dan Lambert. You, um, you could not hear a word he said on 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 the mic. <laughs> and Jericho, Jericho mentioned picked that. Yeah. Up the mic and 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 basically he did, and he wasn't lying. He, I don't think he could hear it, and you know. Uh, I, I have no idea what he said even now, so I'll have to look at, at that later. But uh, I, I could understand at the end there was some, some dynamite match set up for a, another week or two. So that's all I could take away from that. Thank you for listening to the Wade Keller Pro Wrestling Post Shows. Don't forget, we also have the Wade Keller Pro Wrestling Podcasts. That is a blue logo show. This show, you'll notice, has a red logo. There's a very similar logo, but it's blue. And that's for our Thursday flagship, plus our mailbag and interview shows. We have first-run interviews and, most weekends, a classic interview from our archives. Just search Wade Keller in Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to Pro Wrestling Podcasts and choose the blue logo and subscribe. Oh, go ahead, Eric, if you got something. Uh, any uh, merch lines long? Any special uh, Philadelphia-based T-shirts, like Rocky-themed or anything like that? Yeah, I was looking for that. No, a very, very unfortunate. Um, I'm a big merch person. This, I actually walked away without buying anything. Oh, wow. Um, they didn't have – I think they had two tables, two tables max, and um, the only thing that I thought was maybe new tonight – at least from my perspective, was the black version of the CM Punk shirt, which he wore on TV. Um, yeah, really lackluster, though. I was a little uh, saddened by that. The Merc plans were fine. I mean, nothing crazy. Um, certainly activity, but uh, I think before the show started, Cody had a, a, a meet-and-greet photo shoot um, in the halls, um, so there were more people seemingly lined up for that. 
I was going to ask about Cody. When the R and Cody video came up, I assume that played on a big screen somewhere. Um, how did fans react? Yeah, good question. I That was an example, actually, all through the night. That was one where we could only hear bits and pieces. Um, the audio, for whatever reason, um, would come in crystal clear for a few, like the Darby um, beatdown later on. Um, we could hear everything there. Uh, this one was kind of hit and miss. I think, if I recall, it came right after something, you know, that was more in ring. So I think the fans' attention was a little scattershot then. Um, one thing we didn't hear at all, for, as another example, was the acclaimed promo. So when it was announced later in the night when they were uh, going to be on a rampage against the Blucher Brothers, that was completely news to, to me and probably everybody there because we just didn't hear what they had to say. You mentioned the reaction to Bobby Fish. Um and, you know, maybe they don't watch NXT, although it seems like Adam Cole gets quite the pop. So I think people, I think, as, I mean, I don't want to be, mm. you know, mean to Bobby Fish, but I mean, Cole is a star and Bobby was, you know, an underling and he was losing in NXT and he didn't really earn the title shot. I don't think saying something on Twitter earns you a shot. So, I mean, I could see that, but I'm wondering if, if what the reaction was to Sammy Guevara. I, I thought Sammy was just a dynamic heel personality. But what's your sense of how the Philadelphia fans reacted to him? Is it, you know, 100% positive but second-tier reaction compared to some of the others? Or did it seem like, hey, he's like Hangman Page. He's one of the AW Originals, and he's super talented, and they liked him. Like, what, what, was, what was the reaction to him in the building? Yeah, great question. Um, I would probably say the former, more so as far as more second-tier. Not to say, you know, he got a poor reaction. It was just kind of a, a lower bar. You know, if you're really putting him against that Hangman Page or that tier— I would say it certainly didn't live up to that as far as life goes, which was surprising to me. I certainly, um, I'm a big Sammy fan, but um, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't as uh, maybe sustained as you would have thought. Was there any babyface that fans rejected um, in any way, like you know Dante Martin or the Darby video or something with Dark Order? Like, was there any point because it's Philadelphia and you know? There's a history, you know, of this town kind of going, you're not pushing this. You're not, I'm not going to cheer this guy. Um, did that come up at all anywhere, including stuff that wasn't on Dynamite that you might have seen? What do you mean it's still out there? I'm, I'm from here, so um, <laughs> no, I know what you mean. Uh, it, it's right on. But, no, surprisingly, no. I mean, I've been yeah. doing the shows in Philadelphia since I was uh, 10 years old, um, getting up in my late 30s now. So, I mean, it's been a long time, and this is – kind of a surprisingly nice and pleasant uh, respectful audience so um no i can't say that you know as far as a poor baby face reaction or maybe you know looking for some heel heat against the baby face um nothing really comes to mind yeah interesting um anything else happened before dynamite than the ring introductions um from a dark perspective um not to spoil anything but there were a few uh Maybe you guys talked about this, but there were at least two ECW former ECW uh, wrestlers on the card. Well, we, um, happy to you know. Say yeah, we, we get, if people want, if I don't know how many people are trying to avoid dark spoilers <laughs> who listen to this, but um, you've been sure, you've sure. been warned. <laughs> hit the fast forward button a couple times. Um, we probably won't spend more than you know thirty seconds or a minute on. But go ahead, uh, tell us who was there. Yeah, I think that maybe more obvious was the Blue Meanie. He was there. He actually came out as a second um, to surprisingly crowbar of all people. So oh, wow. That was one of the more, you know, kind of head-scratching ones. Um, and he, crowbar, faced Joe Janela. So it was a nice back and forth, kind of a brawl. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was maybe the more random one. And I know, obviously, he has an ECW and WCW history. But, uh, yeah, that was that was interesting. I'd have been I'd have been curious if uh, what the pop would have been if 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 any if Todd Gordon came up, the ECW founder, um, you know <laughs> the guy who got in that town taught his God chance and now Tony is like the modern day, much richer, much much more you know large scale the large scale successful version of of that um, mm -hmm. much much Tony's more camera shy when it comes to TV shows and live events. Oh, I, sh I don't know if I should say that. Um, Todd did say, you know, Todd did authority figure segments on camera at his desk, and Tony's done a little bit of that. And you know, Tony likes those press scrums and ta addressing the crowd. So I don't think they're a ton different. So I, I have no idea how many fans twenty years later, twenty five years later, at this point, um, would go, "Who's that guy?" Um, if he if he were to come out, I, I still am curious if, if Sabu would have gotten a big pop when the lights came on if it was him instead of Malachi Black. I would have guessed so. I heard you guys talking about that. I yeah. would have guessed you would have. Uh, maybe a kind of a shock surprise at first. 
Yeah. Um, I I actually uh, just to add you you mentioned Tony. He he actually came out after Dynamite before Rampage. Yeah. And uh, he gave a very impassioned you know kind of rally uh, promo so to speak to the fans. And he really pumped up. I'm sure he does this in every town, but he really did pump up the fact that he was a huge ECW fan. He came here at 13. Mm -hmm. Um, The only thing he wanted to do was to come to see wrestling in Philadelphia. Uh, And obviously he asked us to stay for Rampage and and said there's a lot more to come. So um, it was really passionate. I've heard he's done this in other cities too. So it's probably, you know, similar to that. But uh, I think he made it very personal as far as the Philly uh, Philly, uh, aspect of it. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Um, what else was going to ask about uh, the show? Eric, do you have anything else you want to ask while I try to remember? While I try to um, remember? What, they announced the Rampage matches, so there's no spoilers there. But did um, what What was the order of the matches? Which of the Rampage matches did you see before you left? Sure. Yeah, so the kickoff will be uh, Danny Garcia versus CM Punk. Um, and then surprise, and surprise to me at least, the tag team title match was second. Mm. Um, th- that said, so that was uh, the acclaimed and uh, Lucha Brothers. Um, and so I, my assumption would be then the women's match, yeah. and then the Philly Street Fight would would close the show. So that was kind of the, the order. Uh, and I was also actually kind of surprised that there were four matches because they always like seem yeah. to uh, nicely fit three matches in an hour. So um, we'll see how they you know time that out. I got to think the women's match will be short yeah. because Sky Blue is young and Jade Cargill mm. is inexperienced. So, uh, and and you would want Jade to sure. get a big squash win anyway. So yeah, that, that would be my guess where they cut time, but maybe there's just less promos. Who knows? Did we get a Max Caster uh, rap on the way to the ring? We did. Yeah, uh, and actually, funny you say that. So you, you made a reference to Ben Simmons, which if you guys are aware, and maybe uh, I know, obviously locally we are as far as him having a. An issue with the 76ers and vice versa. Patrick, um, Patrick, so it's, 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 the, uh, the, this town yeah. is excited about the Timbers right now. And, and there's like, you know, there's, <laughs> there's growing optimism about the season. And there's debates about do we want to trade like three key players and a couple draft picks to get, to get him. So, yeah, we, we definitely, uh, we're, we're definitely cognizant of the situation in Philly and keeping an eye on it here in Timberwolves yeah. country. Well, due to that reference in the rap, the Philly fans did come to life in typical <laughs> fashion. So this is something maybe I forgot earlier, but uh, they had a very negative chant on Ben Simmons with a few expletives in there. So I'm sure either that'll get bleeped out on Friday, or you may just hear that. Did would you consider that they uh, they got a big reaction, Anthony and Max, in terms of like did the fans take him seriously as an act, and for what you saw, react to them, or did they just sort of go, oh, this is just a mid card team, they're going to lose? No, I think they. Um, I think people were really in tune to what um, Caster was going to say as he came to the ring. So once the music hit, I think people's kind of perked up from that perspective. Um, I had to leave kind of just as the match was going, so I'm not sure kind of how the the remainder of that went off. But uh, yeah, no, I think it was it was positive as far as like okay, we know he's going to come out and say something, so let's kind of listen to this. We noticed and noted earlier in the show that Moxley got booed when he hit. Hangman with a chair from behind. Um, talk about the reaction to Moxley compared to the reaction to Hangman Page. Because um, Hangman just seemed like he was over big time. And it didn't matter who else was in that mm-hmm. match. They were gonna be, the crowd was going to be behind Hangman. Um, is, is that what you experienced in the building? Certainly, yeah. It certainly was. I didn't really pick up on anything negative from my view on Moxley. It was a little... I, I don't know if this is true for everyone but just from my perspective we didn't really get to see him early on uh he came from complete opposite side of where i was and i know he brawled with lance archer for a while so i'm not sure if that's a dude a normal entrance and maybe a pop for him um at least early on in the match obviously when he entered but you know not for the remainder of that um so that's just my perspective being there sure sure yep but hang back like I mean, and I, you might have mentioned it earlier. We talked a lot, but was where was Hank, was Hangman on an island unto himself in terms of crowd reaction because he was a surprise and had that big win, or is he? Were there others who got a reaction just right in the same zone as him, like Punk, for instance, or yeah, um, or Danielson? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I. Yeah, and we actually haven't talked about Danielson, but um, I would probably put Punk Danielson. I'm sorry, uh, Hangman Page One and um, Punk 
and really Danielson's entrance again, unfortunately it didn't come off uh, on the show. Uh, maybe, you know, two slash three in that realm. But to answer your question more clearly, I, I do think Paige was pretty much a step above um, for more than anything, just that surprise factor. And that really did sustain throughout the match. Um, Eric, any final question from you for Patrick? No, Patrick did a real good job, real yeah. professional. Yeah. As he does uh, in his Rampage recaps. Yes, yes. Uh, I second that. Uh, Patrick, anything else you want to add that you want to pass along to us uh, that, that we haven't brought up or that you kind of made a mental note to bring up? No, I don't think so. I think the only thing that I might add um, that, you know, again, just being here from uh, episode three of Dynamite to, to, to your anniversary, surprisingly, the arena was not significantly less um, packed, but a little bit noticeably up in that kind of the top tier, a um, few final rows in the second level. There's only really two levels in the arena. Uh, but you could notice on the hard cam side, um, not full sections or anything like that. But again, I just remember taking a mental picture the first time around, and, and I think it was more or less sold out at that point. So it's interesting to see that, especially seeing yeah. how much growth the, the company has, even in Philadelphia being such a hotbed historically. So that was one thing that stuck out to me. That's really interesting because you've got Adam Cole, Brian Danielson, CM Punk, and there's more tickets right. to be purchased that weren't, you know, if, if someone wanted to be in that building, they could have been. And some people, you know, there wasn't a turnaway crowd with those signings, which is, you know, kind of crazy when you think about it, um, you know, in that market. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's one, one little, one little stat, but yeah, you would, you, if you're Tony Khan, you'd, you'd probably be a lot happier um, and more encouraged if, if, if you just sold that smaller venue out and up to the very last row. Yeah, and just uh, on a personal note, I, I do hope they can kind of move out of that arena at some, at some point because it's a, it's a tough it's a tough one to get in and out of. <laughs> but uh, that's kind of a, a side note. From a driving standpoint, or or a walking from your car standpoint? Uh, more the yeah the driving. Uh, yeah. I'm actually from New Jersey, so that alone is uh, difficult. But yeah, so <laughs> it's just uh, not an ideal situation. Yeah, I, we, we hear you. All right, great, Patrick. We'll uh, uh, talk to you next week and hear from you Friday night with your uh, pers- – it'll be interesting to get your perspective at pwtorch.com on how it comes across on TV it can, you know, compared to what you saw in the building tonight. Awesome. Yeah, looking forward to uh, seeing how it came off. Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate Excellent. It. Yep, thanks, Patrick. Have a safe trip home. See you, guys. Bye. All right. Need an extra dose of positivity in your wrestling podcasts? Well, come join me, Alan Forel, over in the Pro Rest Paradise at Peter Torch VIP as we bask on the bright side of wrestling and focus on some of the great matches and shows from around the world, be it the US, Japan, Europe, or Mexico. There's always a place for wrestling's past in the Paradise too, and we've done fun historical shows such as the We Love Liger series, celebrating the glorious career of Jushin Thunder Liger, and our I Was There When shows, where a guest will join me to talk about a classic bout that they were in attendance for. We love variety, and you can expect lots of it at the Pro Rest Paradise. Detailed PWF Torch VIP subscription information and a list of all the VIP benefits is available at pwtorchvipinfo.com. And yes, all VIP podcasts are compatible with popular podcast apps on iPhone and Android devices. Or you can stream them directly from our ad-free VIP mobile site. See you in the paradise. We uh, will move on here to area code uh, 419. 419, go ahead, state your name and uh, the city you're calling from. It's Craig from Plato. Hey, Craig. Good to hear from you. Uh, seems like it's been a little while. What do you think of Dynamite tonight? I liked it. Um, I'm, I was watching between that and the baseball game. You know, they kind of both had my attention because the game's really good. But, um, you, I don't I don't think you guys have brought it up, but you might have when I missed it. Sure. Um, the the attack on Darby in the parking lot or the parking garage thing. Yeah. Do you guys think that that was uh, the pinnacle, or do you guys think that was uh, something else? Do you have a theory on who else it could be? No, but seeing as how they were all wearing masks, um, I mean, it could have just been like they weren't there, they weren't all there. No, so and they they. You they, know, made a call, but it could be like a diversion. Yeah, they covered it in commentary, and I just think it's it's you know 
what is it, Acom's Razor, I think it's pretty clear. They're heels who wanted to do a dastardly act, and they wanted plausible deniability. So they hit under masks, even though we know it's really them. But they'll deny it's them. And, and I think, you know, Shivani or Ross or whatever said, those scumbags are going to deny it, but we know it was them. Um, and, you know, they're just identifying, oh, that's Wardlow, we know. Oh, that's MJF, we know. I don't think there's a swerve. I think it's pretty straightforward. Eric, how about you? Yeah, I, I think so, too. When Wardlow did his move, uh, yes. the only guy who can do that is, or who does that is Wardlow. Yeah. Um, uh, I wrote down in my notes, man, MJF and Darby is a dynamite match. And I had a lot of question marks after uh-huh. that. And then uh, uh, I had to come circle back to that and say, oh, I guess not. Right. So I was I thought that was weird. But I mean, I guess it makes it even more dastardly that the heels are depriving you of this match you thought you were going to get between MJF and Darby on Dynamite. Uh, for for quick context, this- Eric, quick context on that for people because they might have missed the commentary. Late in the show, they just said, we've heard Darby isn't medically cleared for next week. So they advertised the match and then pulled it away because of that attack. So obviously they'll, they'll deliver it, but probably at full gear. Yeah, which, you know, selfishly, I... If I'm going to be at full gear, maybe I, uh, I'm happy about that. Yeah. I, my other thought on this was, man, I know Tony Khan loved his uh, Nitro. And so this was sort of <laughs> a um, tribute to that. Yeah. Uh, one of his never-ending homages to uh, that era of wrestling that he loved so much that uh, caused him to open a wrestling company 20-something years later. Absolutely. Uh, Craig, back to you. With a lawn dart into a stop sign. I know, <laughs> that was, totally. That was pretty, that was yep. pretty wild. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the last thing I speaking to Tony Khan, I must have missed it or something, but I thought they were gonna like Tony Khan was gonna make the announcement and it ended up being Shivani. And they, I don't think they mentioned it like why it wasn't Tony Khan, like was he doing something else or what? But yeah, that's all I had for you guys. And uh, thanks for taking my call. Thanks, Craig. I'm glad you brought that up. I I, I was tempted to even start the show with a snarky comment like, hey, Eric, you know, did I did I miss Tony Khan's major announcement? Um, they advertised Tony Khan with a major announcement. They didn't say, you know, delivered to you by Tony Schiavone, who you get to see six times per show in the ring or backstage interviewing people. Um, I, I, it was a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a bait and switch. You know, I'm not I'm not going to sit here and and, and ride ride a uh, be too critical of a promoter who who doesn't take advantage of TV time, but don't advertise in a way that makes it seem like Tony's going to be the one making the announcement. If you know, one out of 10 on, on grievance, but it was sort of like, yeah, you know, it did feel like next time they say Tony Khan has made your announcement. People are, are, might not take it as seriously, even if the payoff was, you know, significant enough to justify it a new belt. I feel like uh, a couple things here. One, I think just about every time Tony Khan has a big announcement, Tony Schiavone is the mouthpiece for it. I, I feel like this has happened more than once, yeah, yeah. more than just tonight. So in the AEW universe, you probably should expect that Tony Schiavone is just going to be doing the thing when it's a Tony Khan big announcement. Uh, the other thing would be um, Tony Khan maybe knows his limitations. I think you saw kind of. <laughs> Now, far be it for me to call somebody socially awkward because pot kettle black, but Tony Khan, you know, can come across a little socially awkward. <laughs> uh, it's probably not news to him. And so and I know he doesn't want to be an on air authority figure. Right. Because that that's a cliche that's that's can that's very played out. Um, and he would, you know, open himself to up to accusations. Of, oh, he's a money mark who just once bought this wrestling company and got a TV deal just so he could be on TV and play fantasy booker. Um so I'm cool with the less awkward Tony Schiavone being his his mouthpiece for these things. Um, I thought they missed an opportunity to maybe have they had Aubrey Edwards um, unveil the belts. They they could have had you know remember when they early on they had Bret Hart unveiling the title belt. I mm-hmm. think uh, they they could have brought in a retired women's wrestler to give her yeah. a payday and yep. a little bit of shine and attention. Um, but uh, they didn't, and I know you know the women's division is sort of roundly criticized by many who have a bone to pick with AEW or just you know who even like AEW for you know not having the care and attention to detail as you know some of the other programs do. Yep, yep, good point. We're about to go to another commercial break. Why are you listening to commercial breaks? Why deal with these interruptions when you can become a VIP member, support the Wade Keller? Pro Wrestling Podcasts, Wade Keller Pro Wrestling Post Shows, the PW Torch Daily Casts, and the entire team and everything that we do, and get a ton in return for your membership by becoming a VIP member. 
Go to pwtorchvipinfo.com for full details. 30 plus years of archives of podcasts, retro radio shows, over 1,600 back issues of the Pro Wrestling Torch Weekly Newsletter, a fascinating march through our coverage of wrestling history, and so much more, including ad-free versions of the Wade Keller Podcast, Wade Keller Post Shows, and PW Torch Daily Casts, and several exclusive VIP podcasts just about every day, dozens of VIP exclusive podcasts that you're not hearing because you're not a VIP member. So go VIP, pwtorchvipinfo.com. Subscribe to our VIP podcast feed and listen in a streamlined way with no interruptions to all of our podcasts. Again, that's pwtorchvipinfo.com. Hi, this is John Arezzi. Map Memories, My Wildlife in Pro Wrestling, Country Music, and with the Mets is now available everywhere books are sold. Co-written by Greg Oliver, Map Memories is the story of my roller coaster life. Learn the inside stories about my days as the host of the groundbreaking Pro Wrestling Spotlight radio show and as the wrestling convention pioneer and dealmaker. I hold nothing back. Map Memories, available now from ECW Press. All right, let's uh, shift to our segment with PW Torch VIP contributor, Javier. Got uh, some intro music here for Javier. There we go. Javier, welcome. Uh, good to hear from you. Hey, Eric. Hey, Wade. How's it going? Good, good. Hey, shouldn't you be sleeping? Isn't there New Japan uh, G1 starting in a couple hours? Oh, man. And this is going to be a stretch of three episodes, so of three shows. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. <laughs> 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 the... Um, yeah, uh, and uh, I, I'm guessing I'm joining you next week uh, on Saturday, Wade, for a uh, post show. You know, we had we got a few. There? We have a few uh, correspondents lined up. You're you're maybe fourth in line, fifth. We'll see. <laughs> no, no, of course, of course. <laughs> Heel Wade. <laughs> uh, yeah, because uh, we're, we're both go. We're going to both uh, Rampage. My brother and I are both going both to Rampage and uh, the Dynamite shows. Uh, okay. I I did take a look at the tickets uh, earlier today. And it looks like Dynamite, they opened up the uh, the, the, the top area because uh, they're all blue now. They, it looks like they opened up like three new sections. Yeah. Uh, Rampage, on the other hand, not doing so well. <laughs> so yeah. it looks like maybe only less than half of the building may be sold. So, um, it's tough getting people to attend so, yeah, so I don't know. what <laughs> feels like the B show for one hour of TV-worthy content and then... I think there's a fear it's just going to be a dark taping afterwards. So, yeah, I mean, booking major buildings on pay-per-view weekends. It's not like NXT TakeOver where it's this whole other product, um, you know, where people like, I'm excited to see two different things. So I'm I'm real curious how Minneapolis does with uh, with Rampage on Friday right before the pay-per-view too. Well, and, and what's really weird is that I was waiting for that point in the show where they basically start plugging in everything they're doing for the next week or week two in pay-per-view. And there was no mention of anything happening on Rampage or Dynamite next week. And I'm like, uh, uh, you know, other than, you know, the the match, two matches they kind of mentioned, which was the uh, Darby Allen and uh, MJF one, which is not happening now. And just want to point out, this is the second time that Darby Allen is supposed to have a match here in Miami and <laughs> gets taken out 